Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how actually we can communicate with an S3 bucket using a Spring Boot application. So we'll be making use of Spring Cloud AWS and then we will emulate the communication with the real AWS S3 bucket using local stack. So we'll spin up local stack using Docker Compose and have our Spring Boot application communicate with it. Now to finally cap off, we will write an integration test which will actually test this entire setup and with this, let's get started. Okay, let's go ahead and create a project on start.spring.io and here we will add only one dependency that is the Spring Starter web dependency and we are going to give it a group ID and a name such as S3 communication we are going to make use of maven for building this project and we'll be using java 17. so with this i will generate this particular project so now i have already created this project and now i will demonstrate to you how exactly we can communicate with the s3 bucket and for this let's look at this particular project here in this i have this maven project um, let's look at the pom file so in the pom file here the first thing that I've added here is this particular dependency management. So we will be using Spring Cloud AWS to actually communicate with the S3 bucket and we'll be using the 3.0.1 version for this. Along with this, we'll be adding test containers. So you'll be using test containers to write integration tests using local stack. Now, along with this, what we are going to add is this particular dependency that is a Spring Cloud AWS Starter S3 dependency. Now this will allow us to actually communicate with the S3 bucket using this particular dependency. Now along with this are the various dependencies that we require for testing such as local stack itself. So local stack provides a test container through which we can actually do integration tests and along with this we have the dependency for test containers itself. So before we jump into the code, let's look at how we can actually bring up local stack locally on our system. So I have this Docker Compose file in which I'm using the local stack Docker image and I'm exposing the port 4566. So using this port, I'm going to actually communicate with local stack to actually simulate the operations, how you would actually communicate with the S3 bucket. Now I'm mounting here this particular volume here. So this contains a script. So this folder over here contains a script with which I will actually create an S3 bucket. So local stack provides this AWS local CLI inside the Docker image with which you can actually create resources on local stack. Now this CLI is similar to the official AWS CLI through which you can actually communicate with the actual AWS services. Now this AWS local is like a wrapper above the actual AWS CLI. Now, if I replace this AWS local with AWS and run the rest of the command on my machine, trying to communicate with the actual AWS services, this command will work fine totally. So it's the same command. It's just that we will be using the wrapper to do the command on local stack. So now here I'm creating a bucket called as my bucket itself and this is going to be created in the region eu central one with this we will have this particular docker image that will bring up and then afterwards we will communicate with this particular local stack rather than interacting with the actual aws services so now what we are going to do next is let's start this particular docker image so docker compose up now as you can see uh, it has created this particular S3 bucket and it is providing this particular location. Now, when I click on this location, you see that I can see my S3 bucket and it's saying that this is my bucket here. Now, this way of querying the S3 bucket is the host style mechanism to communicate with S3 bucket. There are two types of URLs that you can use to communicate with S3 bucket. One is the host style and the path style. This is the host style that we have. Now, if I wanted to do the path style mapping, I can remove this, put it here. And this is the path style of querying the S3 bucket. We will be mostly using the path style way of communicating with S3 bucket. And for this, what we are going to do is we are going to use this URL to actually configure in our properties file to communicate with local stack. 
So now let's go and see into the code. So I have this source directory here and inside this I have these two classes. Now this one is the class with the main method and this one is my web controller. Now my idea here is that I have two REST endpoints, one which accepts some JSON and it writes it to the S3 bucket on a sample file and then afterwards using the same get endpoint I can retrieve the data from the S3 bucket and send it back to the client. So for this, I have this get mapping here, which actually reads from the S3 bucket and the post mapping, which puts the data onto the S3 bucket. Now to communicate with the S3 bucket, we have this new mechanism called as spring resource mechanism on which I've specified this particular value. Here I'm specifying that I'm going to access the S3 bucket sample file text, which is going to be my spring resource and this is existing on the bucket, my bucket. So I've given the location of the entire file, which is present on the S3 bucket. Now, initially this file may not be present, but if this is not present, it will actually create it for you and then update the data on it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using this particular resource here to actually use the output stream from here and write data to it. And then afterwards, I'm going to use the same file to actually get the data from the S3 bucket. It's a simple endpoint, just takes the data, puts it on the S3 bucket and then reads from the S3 bucket here in the file and then returns the data. Okay. So with this, we are actually done here with the code that we need to actually communicate with the S3 bucket. Now with this, let's actually configure the properties required in order to communicate with the S3 bucket. So once I go to this application.yaml file, here I specify the Spring Cloud AWS S3 endpoint. This is basically the local stack endpoint through which we are going to communicate to the local stack S3 bucket. And then I'm specifying the region here. Along with this, I'm specifying that I will not be using any kind of access key or credentials to actually communicate because local stack does not require this. And also I'll be providing this region that is a static region in order to allow the AWS credentials configure to work with this particular so i'm specifying a static region here that is eu central and this will actually help me to communicate with the s3 bucket with this let's actually go ahead and start the application so i'm going to start this here so now our application is up and running what we are going to do now is make some rest request so let me open Postman here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save some data. So if you see here in the request body section, I have kept this particular JSON. I'm going to send this particular data to the backend and I have not got any errors. So that means this data was actually saved onto the S3 bucket. Now to verify if this data was actually written, what we could do is we can check if this particular data exists. So what we are going to do is let's go to this readme file here and I'm going to copy this particular command. With this, I'm going to now query the S3 bucket on my local stack. So if you see here, this particular sample file is now created and the data will be filled inside it. Let's actually try copying this to my machine here. And then let's see the value of the sample file. So if you see here, the sample file now actually contains this particular JSON that we just stored. So now what we are going to do now is try retrieving this particular data that we just stored using the get request. So let me go back here and I'm going to call the get endpoint here. And with this get endpoint, now I'm able to actually retrieve that particular data from the S3 bucket and show it back to the client. So we just saw how we could communicate with the S3 bucket to store and retrieve data, right? So now what we're going to do, we're going to write an integration test. So let's go to the test section. And in here we see that we have this particular integration test that is present. Now, what I'm doing here is first of all, creating a local stack container because local stack supports test containers also. And then here, what am I doing? I'm actually mounting this particular script with the execute mode 
at this particular location. So with this script, I'm actually creating the S3 bucket. If I show you the script, this script actually will create a my bucket inside the local stack container. Along with this, what am I doing here is I'm setting some of the properties which will come from the local stack container. So here I'm setting the endpoint to this along with the mapped port. And then I'm setting certain things like the region and I'm setting the access keys as none here. Now, along with this, what I'm doing is I'm writing the test here. So first of all, what I do is I check if this particular sample file, which is actually the resource from here, if it's present or not. Now the sample file, if it exists, then it should be false. Does not exist, then it should be true. So I'm checking this here and then I'm performing a post request to actually fill in some data. And then finally, I'm doing a get request to check if that particular data is fetched or not. And then I'm checking if the sample file that I created on the S3 bucket exists or not. So now with this, let's actually stop this particular application here. And now let's run the integration test. So here we have it. We have the integration test passing successfully. And this has now actually, first of all, checked that the file did not exist. Then it put the content into the S3 bucket. Then it fetched the content and then finally made sure that, uh, that the sample file existed. So with this, we are actually able to communicate with the S3 bucket, store the data and also retrieve the data using the Spring Cloud AWS dependency for S3. Now I have written everything about this entire project on my site refactorfirst.com you can find the link to the article in the description below so you can refer to the code as well as the entire understanding for this particular project so we saw how we can communicate with an s3 bucket using a spring boot application using spring cloud aws now i have this entire code and i have written an article about it on my site refactorfirst.com so there's a link into the description down below now, if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.